look at that view guys up on the roof might fall off today we're taking a look at the panels but before we do take a look at the front yard look at that from this view that looks just crazy you can see all this area i haven't even touched there's the artichoke patch weirdly got an artichoke still coming in the loquat tree in the orchard i really need to make sure i don't fall here look at that long shout out what's up guys the pond take a look look at that it looks so much more grown in now the greenhouse we got the arch we got the coop over there but Let's get back to the problem at hand. So here's the problem. It's been about two years, a little over actually, since I first installed these panels. And I've done an update for you guys at the six month mark, at the year mark, at the 18 month mark. It's at the two year mark. And take a look at this panel. It is dirty. So anytime there is dirt on here, you're gonna lose solar efficiency. It's not going to be getting as much light and thus converting that into energy. And then I also found the crows have been feasting up here. These are little loquat seeds. They're all over the panels. So in today's video, I'm going to clean these all off. We'll check back tomorrow and see if we've got an energy boost in production. And I'll also share some thoughts on solar two, almost two and a half years in. I think I found the dirty crow playground because look underneath here. This is a natural low point in the roof design, which is obviously not ideal. I wish the roof was built a little bit better but there is some serious debris under here. I see some crow poop and actually all over here. So I'm gonna to try to give this a sweep first, see if I can clean the roof off. All right, I'm gonna go from top of the slope all the way down 25 panels. Let's clean. So like I said, it's been about two and a half years since I've had the panels. I just pulled the numbers and I've generated 27.2 megawatt hours worth of energy here. That's 27,000 kilowatt hours. Quite a bit of energy in about, I don't know, 30 months or so. So that's just under a thousand kilowatt hours a month. So if you look at your own energy bill and you see how many kilowatt hours you use, you can kind of equate it to what I'm using. But what I will say is aside from the energy connection fee to the grid, I have not paid a single dime on my energy bill. So it's about $120 a year because it's $10 a month to be connected to the grid, which I don't know, to me that's kind of a scam, but whatever. And when you look at the price of a kilowatt hour here in San Diego, it was very difficult for me to calculate, but at a very rough estimate, very rough, I would say, and this is conservative, I would say it's about seven to $8,000 worth of electricity I've generated here in two and a half years. And remember, I got some of these panels not so long ago, so this is paying back way faster than I expected. I was expecting about a seven or eight year payback period, and it looks like it might happen in about five or so, because I'm out roughly $20,000 for the solar. I'm already at a conservative 8,000. That's not using SDG&E's increased rates here in San Diego. So if I'm being moderately aggressive, I would say I've probably generated about $10,000 worth of energy. It's about 50% payback in two and a half years. Just in case you think I'm wasting all this water on the roof, remember, this is just like it was raining. It's running off my roof into my gutter, going into the cistern, and going through a first flush filter. So all this dirt that's coming off these panels is not gonna make it into my rainwater capture. So everything is working as intended here, which is an amazing sight. So it's kind of funny being up here, guys, because I haven't been up here in a while. As you can see from all the debris everywhere, like this little pile of dirt right there, but as I was writing the Epic Homesteading book, which is kind of my story of how I built this property out, it reminds me of how much we depend on the sun. I mean, that's just the truth. I like this idea of like a solar punk future where we're getting most of our energy from the sun with highly efficient solar panels and batteries. I hope we get there. I don't know if we'll get there. We'll have to see if technology progresses enough to let us get there. But really, when you think about what we've built with these solar panels, that's exactly what a tree and plant is doing. That is the light, living equivalent of a solar panel in the sense that it's taking solar energy and it is photosynthesizing it into real compounds that we use for medicine, that we eat, that we you know, harvest, that we use as a cover crop, a chop and drop. And so it's, it's really kind of funny how we've evolved as a species and then you know, we've basically reinvented the wheel in a highly technical way, turning it into electricity, of course, instead of like plant matter. But really everything you see, and this is why they say, don't leave soil bare. It's because you're sort of depriving the soil from the ability for it to 
be recharged by solar energy via the processes of life. That's effectively what's happening. Um, so it's kind of cool being up here and thinking about that. And I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I need a couple more panels. What do you guys think? I feel like I could cram a few more on here, but I just got an EV. So I just got an electric vehicle and that is sort of the capstone on this whole plan. I'm off of gas for every single thing in my life except for my oven. So I have my wall charger coming in pretty soon on my EV and I'm gonna set it up so it charges at 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. at my lowest rate. So when I'm generating energy, I'm generating it at a very high rate and I'm actually consuming it at a low rate. So it's a bit of what's called rate arbitrage. You really need a battery, an energy bank that stores your electricity to really do what's called rate arbitrage, where you're only consuming energy from the grid during the lowest rate environments and you're living off your battery during your highest rate environments. You never pay full price basically for your energy. I don't have a battery yet, so we'll see if I get there, but I'm just about done cleaning. I'm really curious what my energy readings are gonna be tomorrow because I should see a three to 5% boost in production, assuming the entire earth gives me the exact same condition. So it's not a perfect science, we'll have to see tomorrow. Here are the results after I cleaned the solar panels. The solid dark blue line is that day, the day I cleaned the panels, and then the bar graph in light blue is the day afterwards. So what you'll notice is the day afterwards actually produced less energy, but that's because the morning was uncharacteristically cloudy. What you'll notice is when the clouds burnt off right around noon, you can see that the dark blue line is actually below the bar chart line, which means that once conditions basically became equivalent day over day, I actually did get more energy production off of the panels. So not a huge boost, but still, it doesn't take a lot of time to clean the panels, so it was well worth it. Hey, eyes up here. So solar on the property has been a blessing for me. The reason I say that is because I've converted everything in my home to run off the electricity. The more you can utilize the surplus power, the more worth it the solar energy move is going to be for you. I would highly encourage you to calculate using a solar calculator if you wanna do this because you need to know what your rate is in your area. Sometimes it's spread over certain times, like a peak hour rate is much higher than a super off peak hour rate at like 1 a.m. So that will change the equation. Whether you can generate a credit or you can actually be paid for your energy is a pretty important one in my city in San Diego. We cannot be paid for our energy. What we can do though, is accrue a negative balance on our bill that we then earn back up. So let's say in the winter months, I'm not generating as much energy, but I might be using more to heat the house up. Then I'm decreasing my negative balance. So basically I'm sort of getting paid for my energy. I can just never actually cash that to physical dollars. Unfortunately, I wish I could. It would actually change the equation even more in favor of solar power for me. But you'll notice on the graph that we're about to put up here, there was a pretty bad dry spell for sunlight this year. Basically from February to June, it's been pretty light. And so you can tell that this year just wasn't as much of a bountiful year for solar. Seems like, based on the amount I'm sweating right now, that it might be making up for it as we move into the latter half of the year, but that's just how it's gonna be. Some years are gonna be good, some years are gonna be bad. To me, I think it's extremely worth it. And if battery tech comes along a lot more than it is now, like if we start to get batteries that have five, 10, 20 times the capacity per whatever unit of measure, and you can slap that on your house and you can actually live off of a battery for a significant amount of time, you start really unlocking some interesting possibilities for the future. Solar, of course, being a pretty old technology. It makes a lot of sense. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have solar questions, drop them in the comments. I'd love to answer some, maybe in a Q&A session. Till next time, I'm gonna go take a shower. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.